All right, guys, welcome back. So now we're done with persisting objects to our database. So now what we want to do, obviously, is start seeing what we're creating, right? I mean, what's, where's the fun in creating stuff if we can't see it? So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to our actions folder and we're going to go to types. And we're going to create a new type here, a new action type. Because now we're going to start using uh, Redux not just to um, say get errors, but now we're also going to use Redux to display what we're getting from our server when we do a get, right? So here, uh, I'm, I'm just going to create a new type and we're going to call it get project tasks, okay? This is what we're going to call it, get project tasks, and I'm just going to save this here, all right? Now, with this in place, what I'm going to do is go and create a reducer because in this video, all I want to do in this video is make sure that when we load our project dashboard, we can at least see project tasks in our state. All right. Not not just yet on the UI, but at least we want to load them in the state in this video. And then in the, obviously in the next one, then we're going to start showing things, right? So uh, for this, I'm going to go to my reducers folder and I'm going to create a new reducer. And this reducer is going to be called project task reducer. Project, oh, project task reducer. All right. As, as any other reducer, we have to first import the action that we're gonna, the action that we're gonna use. Oh my God! I created actually a whatever file here. Let me just delete this thing here. Sorry, guys. My mistake. Project task reducer .js. Okay, it's a JavaScript file, and then we're gonna import this thing that we just created here. The project task tasks. Import project tasks from and then where I'm just going to use my intelligence here to go to actions and then types. Cool. All right. So as with the other reducers, the, the other reducer, first, we're going to give an in, this reducer an initial state. Okay. And this is going to be an object that's going to contain, contain project tasks. And it's, this is going to be obviously an empty array of project tasks. Okay. Because before, before we load our project board, then, you know, we, we don't make an API call to get project tasks. All right. Then we're going to obviously start doing export default function state equals initial state and then the action. <clears throat> we're going to use our switch statement here action dot type and then remember you always need to have a default action here which is default it just returns state things will break without this guys so just make sure that you always include that in your own projects then here we're gonna say case get project tasks and then what this case is going to do is going to return the state and then it's going to load the project task array that we defined right here and it's going to load it with the action payload okay so basically when we do our api call and when we dispatch get project tasks from our get method in the project act task actions that we're going to create later, then that's what's going to load this onto the state, right? And then when you go to the state, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see this this here, right? Now, a very important thing, and a lot of my students in my other course have I, I, like I've heard a lot of of the of of like people asking for help with this specific issue. So I really want to take a, a, a like a, a pit stop here and make sure that you guys are completely clear with this. Whenever you create a new reducer, you need to go here to the root reducer 
which is as I mentioned before is the meeting place of reducers and then you need to actually import it here okay and I'm just gonna say project task reducer and remember I have my auto import you'd have to do this on your own if you don't have such uh, setup all right but remember because a lot of people are like, hey, I did everything. Like, I love that. Like, I've, I've gotten some people saying, hey, I did everything exactly as you told me, and it's not working. And then I'm like, send me your code. And when I look at the code, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and again, I'm not I'm not bashing anybody or, or bad-mouthing anybody. Like, it happened to me many times. Trust me. So that's why I'm telling you, don't, don't make bad mistakes, and please pay attention to what you're doing here. That's all I'm saying, all right? So... Make sure that this is in place or else you're not going to get your project tasks loaded onto your state and you're not going to be able to do anything else. Cool. All right. So now that we have this in place, we can go to our project task actions and we're going to create our get. Okay. So we're going to say export const get backlog, which is how we're getting our project tasks. We're not passing any parameters here. And then we're obviously returning whatever it is that we're dispatching, okay? Okay, so we're gonna say const res await. And then it's gonna be axios.get. And remember what our API is for getting all the project tasks? Well, let's go to our server and, and just refresh our memories. All. So it's basically localhost API board all. Cool. So that's exactly what we need to pass here on the get method. So it's basically going to be HTTP. Remember that mistake that I had in the last and in, in one of the well the first time we actually call the API. So make sure it, it, you put the HTTP there. Okay. Localhost 8080. This API board. Okay, and um, I haven't restarted my server, so I still have some some of that garbage data that we were that that, that I was playing with. Remember when we were, when I was actually uh, when we were testing the error generation and the error going away when everything went well. So I still have that because I, I never restarted my server. So. As you can see here, I have some data. If you don't have any data because you restarted your server for whatever reason, just go, uh, pause the video and just go create some uh, some test uh, t test project tasks and make sure that you have a couple, that you have a few, right? At least three, I'd say. I have seven right now, but I have at least three. I have a few of the of those there. Okay, so we have that there. So basically, we're making the API call. And then what we want to do here is that we want to dispatch to our get project task case. And what we want to give this is the payload, which is the res.data. So basically, basically what we want to what we're passing on to our state is the data that we get here right which is pretty much pretty much again if you if you copy and paste this here basically pretty much what we're saying is all this data here pass it on to our store all right so this is good so now what we need to do then is and it's basically the last step that we need to follow in this video is then update our project board component so that we can actually see things load in the state whenever we load our project board but first I need to save this file alright so we're gonna go to our project board and first we're gonna start by by importing some things that we really need first import connect from react redux so we can connect to our store. Okay. Then we're going to import 
prop types. So we can define that prop type, uh, which is a get backlog, because I mean, this component shouldn't do anything without that function, right? Which is pretty much what calls the API and loads your set of project tasks. Prop types from prop types. And then, as I mentioned, import get backlog from actions project task. Yeah, project task actions. All right, we're going to save this here. Huh, prop types. Can't resolve prop types. What did I type wrong here? Huh. Let me see, guys. Don't worry. I'll, we're going to figure this out. Oh, duh. sorry, guys. It's not underscore. It's actually dash prop types. All right. Cool. Don't make the same mistakes I made. Everything looks good. All right. So now we need to uh, connect to our store. Just make some room. I always forget to make room for you guys. We're going to go to the bottom. We're going to surround this in parentheses. We're going to bring connect. And then we're going to say no. And then we're going to pass here the action. Okay. Then we obviously need to do our map state, map state to props. So it's going to be const map state to props. And we're going to pass it the state. Okay. And obviously, this is in a in, in a very simplistic way how we extract how, how we extract our project tasks from our state. Okay, so it's basically project tasks is state dot. And where are we getting this again? Let's see. Let's go to the root reducer, and it's basically state dot project task. Okay. Remember, and again, I, I really want to make sure that this is clear. As you can see, we have project task in our state as one of the reducers. It is named project task right here in the root reducer, and it uses the, the project task reducer. And within that, that reducer, then we have an empty array of project tasks as an initial state. So that's why we, uh, when we are mapping our state to props, then we need to get it from the project from project task, right? Which is the say the ID that we're giving it in the root reducer, okay? And then this map state to props here, we need to pass it over here. Now, last thing we're gonna do here is uh, project board dot prop types, and remember, guys, this prop type here is lowercase p, uppercase t. If you do prop types, it's, it is important over, over here, it won't work. I've, I made that mistake so many times when I was learning React and Redux, oh my god. I just don't want you guys to uh, be stuck with uh, silly things like that, okay? So here we're going to say get backlog, prop types, the func is required. We need this function here. And then we need, oh, obviously, the project tasks, right? We need that array, which is basically, uh, we're going to put it as an object here. So it's going to say prop types, the object, it's of type object, and then it is required as well. Awesome. So now, now that this is all here, and you guys already saw that we now we have the project task in the state. And remember, we won't have this in the state unless you import it here in the index.js file in the reducers folder. I want to be super clear with that because I've gotten so many questions about this that I know this is a point where people usually get lost. And I don't want you guys to be lost, of course. I want you guys to succeed in this. So make sure that this is in place, all right? Seriously, if I get if I get a question about this, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm a super nice guy, but I'm gonna be like, come on, man, <laughs> we we talked about this over and over again, all right? 
don't worry guys i i i was i was a student at some point so i'm not, I'm not gonna be snide to you or anything but all i'm saying is like please pay attention so so you guys don't don't waste time uh on things that we're we're covering right okay so as you can see we have this here but what we want to do is that every time we load our project board we actually call this action here which will in turn call our API and retrieve all of our project tasks. So for this, we need to use another lifecycle hook, all right? And this lifecycle hook is called component did mount. So component did mount. And again, the description here is called immediately after component is mounted. Setting state here will retrigger rendering. Basically what we're saying here is every time you load the project board, then uh, this is where the API is going to happen, right? And we already wire everything up. We already connected to our state. We already imported our action. So all we have to do is trigger our action within this lifecycle life cycle hook, right? So basically, I'm just going to open parentheses here, curly braces, and then all I'm going to say is this dot props dot get backlog, which is our action. With this in place, if we go to our local host. In, and I, if I did everything right, if we did everything right, then I should see that subset of projects that I showed you earlier on the browser, we should see that in our state as well. Okay, so why don't we just give it a shot? And again, I haven't restarted my server. If you have, if you have done so, then please create a few dummy project tasks before coming here. And this is awesome. Perfect. So if you guys can see here, we do have seven project tasks, which are the ones that I showed you in the browser. So this is this is really great. And and again, you guys always always make sure that you do your due diligence, right? Like no no test is too dumb. It's always good to be on the safe side. Let's just run the query in the database, and as you can see, we see exactly the same thing. And this is really great. And this is where I'm stopping the video. In the next one, then we're going to start working on displaying over here. All right, that's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Talk later.